Good morning. Glad you're here. I just want to, again, reinforce what Ross shared about gather around the table. Um, one of the best, highest, most important ways you can show love to someone is help them to meet Jesus. That involves their eternal life. And so gather around the table, it's primarily for people that are unchurched or don't know the Lord. So I want to encourage you, I'm praying about who to invite. I'm going to make a meal for gather around the table to get behind it because introducing people to Jesus, nothing more important, nothing more important. All right, well, welcome. Uh, today we're continuing our series from fear to faith, preparing to step in. And, you know, as we're talking about moving from fear or overcoming fear, fear is an interesting emotion. Fear is what's called a primary emotion, but sometimes primary emotions can turn into what they call secondary emotions. For example, with fear, fear can develop into anger. So fear is a primary emotion, and it could develop into anger. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're driving on the freeway. Someone suddenly comes through the speeding and cuts you off, right? The actual primary emotion is fear. You're fearful for your life. You're fearful for your safety. You're afraid that you might have gotten hurt. But often, it develops into a secondary emotion very quickly, which is what? Anger, right? Anger at the driver. Now, I know, I know that doesn't apply to any of you. You know, it doesn't apply to any of you. But um, fear develops into anger. Another secondary emotion that fear develops into or can become Fear can become anxiousness, anxiousness, worry, right, anxiety that continues over a long period of time. Definition of anxiousness, the state of being greatly worried, mental distress or uneasiness because of fear of danger or misfortune. So fear can develop into this underlying anxiousness that we carry around or that we feel all the time. According to Forbes Health, anxiety, anxiousness is the most prevalent mental health issue affecting people today. In fact, they say almost 20% of adults are dealing with anxiety. One third of 13 to 18 year olds are dealing with anxiety. And almost, I was, I was surprised by this, almost 50% of those in the 18 to 24 year range, year old range, have reported various multiple symptoms of anxiety. If we are unable or can't get a handle on anxiousness, anxiety, it can put us in bondage. It can put us in bondage and prevent us from experiencing and stepping into God's call, his plans, his purposes, his goodness for our lives. So this morning, we are going to look at anxiousness as an offshoot of fear, and we are going to look at what the Bible says about overcoming anxiousness. And when you think of anxiousness, if you've read your Bible, if you know your Bible, if you, when you talk about anxiousness, there is one section of scripture that immediately pops up to your mind. And what is that? Philippians 4, right? Philippians 4, 6 through 8. So let's look at that. Philippians 4, Pass verses 6 through 8. Let me just read verse 6 to you. Right off the bat, Paul says this. Be anxious for nothing. Okay? Be anxious for nothing. Right? Can't get any clearer than that. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving... Let your request be made known to God. Paul doesn't mince words. Paul doesn't go around the bush. Paul isn't subtle about it. 
he comes up, bang, be anxious for nothing. And the picture behind this word for anxiousness used here in this passage, it's kind of the picture of a person being pulled in many different directions. Actually, the root word that's translated in English, anxious, the, the root word, the original root word, comes from a word that means to strangle. To strangle. So when we're anxious, you, maybe you can relate to this, right? You either fe you're feeling like you're pulled in many directions, your mind or your emotions are getting pulled in many dis different directions, or you're feeling like strangled by circumstances or by the situation. Now, while some anxiousness, some anxiousness is healthy, some anxiousness is helpful when it kind of warns us to be alert to some legitimate dangers, right? But most anxiousness, in fact, I read a, I read a survey a statistic, they say only 7% of our, the things we feel worried or anxious about are legitimate worries or concerns. 93% are things that will never happen, are unrealistic, are not based in truth, right? So a lot of our anxiousness, a lot of our anxiety, a lot of those emotions of fretting, they're not good. They're not healthy. They affect our health and they can paralyze us. That's the same word that's used here for anxiousness. It's found in Luke chapter 10, 41, 40 and 41. So it's a very familiar passage. This was where Jesus, he, is, he goes to Mary and Martha's house and they invite him to go for dinner and we'll see what happens, right? But Martha was distracted, distracted, overoccupied. That's what that word means. Too busy, dragged all around mentally. This could have been written about any one of us today, right? Overoccupied, too busy, dragged in all directions. Martha was distracted with all her preparations, with all her doing. And she came up to him, Jesus, and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Come on, Jesus. I'm doing all the work. My sister's just sitting at your feet. Aren't you, don't you care that she's not helping out? Then tell her to help me. I thought this was very interesting. This word for help me, it's Tell her to strive with me. To strive. You know when we feel anxious? We feel like we need to strive for something. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. You know when the Lord says your name twice? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, this is getting serious. Martha, Martha. You are worried, you're anxious, and bothered, troubled about so many things. And he goes on to say, share, there's only one true real thing, and Mary has chosen that part, and it's to come be at my feet, be with me. Jesus didn't care about all the running around, all the busyness. She was trying to serve him but she was missing out on the most important thing, <coughs> Jesus himself coming into his presence. That same word for anxiousness used in Philippians, it's the same word we find in Matthew 6. You know Matthew 6, right? Matthew 6, it says, don't worry, don't be anxious about what you should eat or what you should drink or what you should wear. Seek first God's kingdom, and everything will fall into place. Jesus tells him, worry, anxiousness gets you nowhere. It actually negatively affects you. And so, he says, Paul says, be anxious for nothing. You know, um, when it comes to anxiousness, I didn't, I didn't think this was that big of a deal for me. I think that was, this was that big of an issue for me because I don't, I don't think I worry that much, you know? I remember one time we were on a staff meeting and we were talking about 
what, what you think? And, I, and they're asking, we were talking about that, and I go, you know, a lot of times, I, I'm not thinking anything. <laughs> Just kind of blank, you know? <laughs> Just kind of experiencing the day and stuff. So I didn't, I didn't think I worried about too much stuff. I don't, and I don't tend to dwell on stuff in my mind, dwell on things too much. So it surprised me when this was like four or five years ago when I started doing my journaling. And the, the focus of my journaling was not for me to journal, oh, this happened in my day, or this was going on, or it wasn't a, even a prayer to God. It was specifically journaling about what God, I felt God was speaking to me. Like what we're doing in our class, learning to hear God's voice. And as I started journaling, and I developed the skill and kept at it more and more, I like, Clarity to God's voice. God's voice became clearer. I started hearing him more and more. He'd hear more and more stuff. But what surprised me was usually more than once, probably two or three times a week, the Lord would tell me, don't, don't fret. Don't be anxious about that. Don't, be over, don't overthink that. And he would be, he goes, just Stay close, trust in me. And, and at, over time, I, he would keep saying that to me and keep saying that to me. I was like, well, I, I don't feel like I was that anxious. But as I kept coming before the Lord, quieting my heart, I would, I would start recognizing, I started getting more in touch. I go, oh no, I, I am anxious. Internally, not on the surface, but internally, there's a lot of days I feel, I feel anxious about things. I feel anxious about stuff. And, you know, it's just kind of like low-level, constant anxiousness that, that's inside. And what I learned, what the Lord revealed to me that was very significant in conjunction with anxiousness, he revealed, he showed me, he told me, when you're anxious your tendency will be to act out of your flesh. Because when we feel anxious, we feel like we got to strive. We got to fix it. We got to do something. And when we act, usually we take matters into our own hands or we try to do something before the right timing or we push or press something. Or, and I was like, oh, man. How often am I reacting? Am I doing things because there's that anxiousness inside? And so over the years, the Lord keeps speaking to me. And that's, that's one, just one of the many reasons why that time with the Lord for me and hearing his voice is so important. Because I would have thought, I'm not anxious. I'm good. And unknowingly, it would have been continuing to activate all this fleshly stuff. And so, so, yeah, that was a huge realization for me that anxiousness activates my flesh. And if you're operating in the flesh, the Bible says in Romans, it is impossible to please God. The flesh never, never, ever is in alignment with God. It always works and fights against the Spirit and God. So Paul goes on to tell how to overcome anxiousness. He says, be anxious for nothing. And then he goes on. He gives us how can we not be anxious? How can we overcome anxiousness? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Bible says the antidote for anxiousness is prayer. The antidote for anxiousness is prayer. What prayer is? One aspect of prayer. It's verbally giving all our cares, our concerns, our worries to God. In prayer, we verbally tell God, we verbally give all our cares, concerns, worries 
to him. But not just any prayer, but it's prayer with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Why is prayer with thanksgiving so important? Why is thanksgiving so important? Because when we pray and when we thank the Lord, we are acknowledging God you're in control. God, you are God and I am not. God, you know even I don't know. And we're thanking God because as we've verbally given that stuff to, to him, we acknowledge, thank you, God, for taking that stuff. Thank you for taking the wheel in my life. That's why Thanksgiving is so important because it is acknowledging to God who he is and that we're, we have given it to him. You know, this idea of letting God take the wheel, letting someone else take the wheel of your life, it could lead to tremendous peace or it could lead to greater anxiousness. This past couple of weeks, I've been talking to Several parents who are teaching their teenagers to drive. And as they've been describing it, I can see and hear in their voice, fear. <laughs> Anxiousness, right? Giving the wheel, giving control of this, right? Several thousand pound vehicle to their teenage son or daughter. Fear. Anxiousness, worry. Why? Because giving the wheel is good, but it depends on who you're giving the wheel to. It depends on do I trust this person with the wheel? Right? Because a lot of times, right, when we're teaching the teenage, we love them. We don't trust them with that vehicle yet. We see how they. Swerving on the road, not looking back when they make turns, all these things. But the question here with prayer, can you trust God with the wheel? Do you trust God with the wheel? When we thank him, it's because of who he is, and it's because we have let go of the wheel to him. No matter the circumstances, no matter how things appear, no matter what's going on, God, you got this. I am giving you the thank you for taking the wheel. Thank you that I can trust you. Thank you that you're in control. Thank you that you know more than me. You know way more than me. You know the future. You know my life. You know where, where you're going to take me. Thank you that you got it. You got it. 1 Peter 5 talks about this. It says, therefore, humble yourself. You know what humility is? It's walking in dependence on the Lord. It's saying, God, you're God, I'm not. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you, he may lift you up, he might work things out, he might bless you at the proper time. Then this, casting all your anxiety on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Because he cares for you. You know, this is what we do sometimes. So we pray, and we pray, and it says, cast all your cares upon him. All the things in our lives. So this is like a piggy bank. So God, okay, I give you, cast all my cares about financial stuff, worries. I, I, I give you, you know, all my thing, my house, my all the things that are going on and with the, the possessions, the things I own, right? I, I give you my work, right? 
I give you my work, the people at my work. I'm having, I, I give you that, Lord. I, I, I give that, release that to you, God. I cast that care upon you. I, I give you my health, Lord. I'm dealing with them health concerns, so I, I'll, I give you my health. You have numbered my days. You know my days. And you know, if we're wise, you don't want short the number of days he's assigned for you, but you don't want more than the number of days he's assigned for you. You don't want, you want the exact number of days he has assigned for your life. And so Lord, I, I give you, I give you my, my health. And this is a, a, a baby, you know, one of my grandkids. I give you my, my kids, Lord, their future, what's going on with them. And, and I give you the, the people in my life, my spouse, right? My spouse, little Hello Kitty. <laughs> I, I give you my, my spouse. I, I give you all of them. Lord, you got the wheel. I cast all my cares. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. And a few days goes by. And so, you, you, know, you know what? I, I, I don't see anything happen with my finances. And, you know, I, I feel like I, I, need to, I need to start doing something with that. I, I need to start changing up. And, and I, I, I'm going to, I got it, God, I got it. I'm going to take this back. And then, you know, you know, my health, I don't know what's going on with my health. I don't seem like I'm getting better. I'm going to try these alternative medicines, you know, health things. I'm going to go to these, you know, I, I, my friend told me about this, you know, like this shaman that does these miracles. I'm going to try something. I'm gonna, I, I, God, I, I, I got this. I got this. And, you know, I, I don't like the direction my kids are going in. I, I, they're making some poor choices. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, and pretty soon. All the things that bringing us anxiety and anxiousness and worry, God says, cast it upon him because he loves us. We take back. God's got him. He's okay. <laughs> Letting God take the wheel, casting your cares upon him. The one, I always say this, the one who gave up his only son for you. The one that takes care and clothes the flowers, feeds the birds, knows the number of hairs on your head, gave everything the most important thing was willing to give his son. Can you trust him with the worries and concerns in your, in your life? If we pray with thanksgiving and give all of our cares to him. Acknowledging he has it, it's in good hands, he's God, he has the wheel. Then this is what happens. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension. You know this word comprehension? It means of superior rank, authority, and power. The peace of God, which is superior in rank, authority, and power than any of the concerns and any of the things and thoughts and any of the strategies and tactics that you can devise to take care of it, it's of greater rank, God's peace greater authority, greater power. And that peace will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This word guard, it's a military term. 
It means he will set a military guard to guard your heart, your emotions, and your thoughts, your mind, to prevent foreigners from invading. That's what that means. The peace of God will be like armed soldiers that will guard your heart and mind and prevent the enemy from invading your thoughts and invading your emotions. If you pray, verbally express your cares, worries, anxiousness, fears to the Lord, with thanksgiving, God, you are God. You are trustworthy. And give all your cares to him. He says, he promises, his peace will come upon you. Peace is greater than your own understanding and comprehension. Peace that will be like armed soldiers guarding your mind and guarding your hearts. Lastly, in Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell, let your thoughts dwell on these things. To maintain God's peace, don't open the gate of your mind and your thoughts, and let evil distraction ungodly thoughts in. Proverbs 15, 14. A wise person is hungry for knowledge while the fool feeds on trash. What are you feeding your mind? What are you sowing into your mind? What input are you putting into your mind? Because whatever you're putting in your thoughts, it's either feeding your spirit and the connection of your soul to your spirit or it's feeding your flesh and closing off the connection of your soul to your spirit. It will either fuel one or the other. It will either fuel anxiousness or peace based on what you're putting into your head. There's a phrase, there's a saying, so a thought Reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. Be careful what you're inputting, feeding into your thoughts. Social media, the majority of social media is putting things in your head and putting things into your kids' heads that is leading to greater anxiety and anxiousness. I'm convinced that this proliferation of anxiety in society, and especially among kids, it's directly a result in part to social media. To all the stuff they're getting exposed to. Parents, you have to be vigilant and help them discern to close those gates. Because the enemy is using those influences, those thoughts to distract, to make them pull apart, to help make them feel strangled and anxious, to destroy their lives. Let me just say one word before we close. Sometimes people have a very difficult time controlling their thoughts feel anxiousness. And for some people, for some of us, it's the result of something organic, something biological, something physiological having to do with the, the brain's chemistry, the actual physical brain's chemistry. In those cases, I think in, in some or maybe many of those cases, it's appropriate, I think it's good, to seek a physician, to seek medical care. Because if a person ha cannot control their thoughts, I know someone right now who's in the hospital because they changed her medication 
and as a result of changing medication for, to help her with some issues she has, because they changed her medication that she was on for many, many decades, she spiraled down. And so for me, it's like, yes, needs prayer, yes, needs encouragement, but primarily, it's a physiological issue. They have to deal with from medical perspective, from medical, from medications sometimes. So let me just say that word of encouragement. There's no shame in that. It's like if someone has a broken arm, would you say, why are you going to the doctor? You just pray about it. God can heal. God does heal. God does miracles. We pray for that. But you also want to address it medically too. You want to address it in all these different ways. Okay? Let me just say that. Okay, I'm going to just close. I'm going to close with this um, video clip. And um, it's kind of interesting because I'm not actually sure why I'm showing this clip. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to show it. <laughs> but it's, it's a clip from BGT, okay? Britain's Got Talent. And this was several months, several weeks ago. Um, someone sent me something, and then I looked, and then it led me to kind of down this rabbit trail of looking. I, I was looking at, I, and I, I like AGT, America's Got Talent. I like that show. I like, the, and then I started looking at it, and then I came across this um, performance from this woman on, on BGT, and I watched it, and I was just like, oh my God. I, I mean, actually, I was kind of tearing up. I was just like, whoa. And, um, and then I felt like prompted by the Lord, actually, to watch it. I watched it over and over and over, and I, I could sense something. I go, gosh. And, and it's not a Christian song. It's not a Christian performance. Secular, but I go, there's something in this. There's something. And I started, I just was asking the Lord, Lord, what is it in this performance? What is it in this song, the way she's singing it? And the Lord, basically the Lord said, there's truths in what she's singing. There's something of me in what she, the way she's singing it, her authenticity, her emotional presence. There's stuff in there. And then I thought, oh, oh. So I felt like the Lord wanted me to have you look at, watch it today, and then I'll comment and we'll close after this. Okay, so hope you enjoy this.
Why do does this um, act, it moved me? And I was asking the Lord why, because it speaks to something very basic, very universal amongst all of us. It speaks about hope, the hope that tomorrow will come and it'll be better than today. I don't know what you're going through that's causing you anxiety, anxiousness, worry, or fear. But the Lord told me through this, tomorrow is me. The Lord said, tomorrow is me. I'm better than tomorrow. I'm your hope. I'm the one that you could cast all your cares upon. I'm the one that you could trust to take the wheel. Don't let anxiousness creep in. Don't live with that continual underlying state 
or feeling anxious or worried or fearful. Because the Lord says, I'm tomorrow and more than tomorrow. Put your hope in me and move forward with faith. Let's bow forward in prayer. Lord, when we feel anxious and when we feel worried and when we feel afraid, Lord, a lot of times we are becoming overwhelmed, pulled, choked by the circumstances in our lives. Our eyes get fixed on the things around us, the wind and the waves, the storm, and we feel helpless and we don't know what we need to do, or we try to take matters into our own hands. But Lord, you say, pray with thanksgiving, tell you, give you all of our worries, all of our fears, all of our concerns, give them to you. Don't take them back, that you have them all. live in the peace that you could bring when we recognize and acknowledge who you are and we fix our eyes on you and we cast all our cares upon you. Lord, right now as we come before you, um, search our hearts, Lord, We invite you, Holy Spirit, to search our hearts. Bring to surface, bring to our mind anything and everything that we feel anxious about, worried about, fearful about. And as it comes to service, let us see your open hands. Let us hear your voice to say, cast your care upon me because I love you. And help us to open our hands and let go of those things. Give them all to you and trust you with them so we can be free to move forward in faith. So Lord, Holy Spirit, would you move on this time? And would you um, prompt and move for us to cast all our cares upon you? Thank you, Lord, that you're so good. You're so loving. You're kind. You're gracious, you're joyful, you're just, you're good. Thank you. We just come before you now and worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. Hope you will join us in person sometime. It would be great to see you and meet you. Don't forget to subscribe to our Catalyst YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything. And be blessed this week. And as always, thank you, Jesus.